Hey folks, this isn't my workbench, but it's the exact same style workbench. It's actually a little bit taller. I met a friend of mine's house and he has yet to flatten the top of it. So I brought a couple planes and today I'm going to show you how to flatten one of these workbench tops. When it comes to exactly what you need, there's a little bit of room for flexibility. You don't necessarily have to have this exact plane or this exact plane. Basically any hand plane will work, but the longer the plane that you have, generally speaking, the easier it will be to flatten wider, longer surfaces. Uh, so what I'm going to use is this low angle jack plane, and then this will do the vast majority of the flattening. It's the longest plane that I have. And after that's done, I'll use, this is actually a number four and a half smoothing plane to just smooth the surface and remove any mill marks that this one has left. Everything can be done with a regular number four hand plane, but I've got a couple of these that'll make my job a little easier. A couple of other things we'll need are two straight edges. They don't have to be levels like they are in this case, just two items that you know are perfectly straight. Uh, that way we can use those to check for twist. And then also something to make marks on the, the uh, work surface so you know the high spots, the low spots, and you can adjust accordingly. And then also the thing to uh, put most importance on is candle wax. Some type of wax on the bottom of your planes. I did not start putting wax on the bottom of my planes until I flattened my workbench top. And it really, really makes a huge difference, especially if you're going to be using the plane a lot for whatever operation. The first step is to use the straight edges to identify any of the high spots. These are the areas that will obviously have the most material removed. And you also want to do this periodically uh, throughout the process of flattening just to make sure that they go away and other high spots don't pop up. Next, you can use both straight edges as a pair of winding sticks. And the way this works is you put one of the straight edges on the opposite side of the table, one close to you, and you look down the length of the slab. And if you're trying to compare the tops of both of the winding sticks or straight edges, and if they don't line up, if they are on different angles, and that'll tell you if you have a little bit of twist. You can also check throughout the table, not necessarily the whole length, to see if there is any twist. Um, this will let you know if one corner is high, one corner is low, and again, which areas you need to remove more material. So I know that's incredibly difficult or hard to show through a camera lens, uh, but if you do this in person, uh, looking through your own eyes, you can really tell subtle differences and you'll be able to pick up on a twist. So what I've determined is either this corner back here to my right is either high or this corner back here is too low. One of the two. There is a slight twist, but to try and narrow it down just a little bit more, I divided it in half and I set up the winding sticks on this side and looking down through here, I can't determine any twist at all. So this section looks nice, uh, fairly nice and flat. Going to this side, the twist is is back to where it was before and this side is still high. So that tells me that the twist starts somewhere around here and that this corner over here is higher than these four points on this side of the workbench. So the first thing to do is to uh, look at all of our high spots and just remove a little bit of material from the high spots first. Again, I'm using my jack plane first and I'm going to use it with a fairly aggressive cut for the vast majority of all of the material removal. I didn't remove a ton of material on this corner, but what I did remove uh, took out the twist. So it's a good idea to occasionally check everything, check your progress and see if you have removed it. Now that I have removed the twist, I'm going to focus on just flattening the rest of it. Uh, but occasionally throughout the process, it's a good idea to put the winding sticks back on and to check everything just to make sure you're not introducing any more error rather than flattening. With the twist taken care of, I can focus a little bit more attention on the high spots, knocking them down individually before I go to the entire flattening process. At this point, I have the twist pretty much taken care of and the major high spots taken down quite a bit. Now I'm ready for the overall flattening. And to do so, I want to make sure that the entire workbench top is worked from left to right or vice versa, right to left, at a 45 degree angle to the grain direction. Now the reason being is once you go one full pass left to right and change directions going right to left or vice versa, then you're actually working at a perpendicular direction to your previous plane path. And what that'll do is cancel out any imperfections as far as you removing too much material on one pass or not enough on the other. It'll help keep everything in check and hopefully uh, 
cancel out again all the high spots and eventually working down to a nice flat surface. Now the reason why you want to make sure your alternating directions uh, cancel each other out is because if you're trying to flatten a work surface such as this going with the grain direction then what, you will, what will probably end up happening is you'll get a nice flat surface along the grain but who's to say that you're not removing more material on this edge than you are here in the middle because you're not keeping each other keeping those passes in check uh, so you may end up with nice flat along the, the whole length of it uh, but not along the perpendicular to the grain so you may have hills and valleys and such always work at a 45 degree angle alternating directions and that way you cancel each other uh, you cancel uh, each one of the plane paths out Depending on how unflat the slab is, more work you obviously have to do. It took us about a dozen passes left to right, back and forth, focusing on the high spots, checking for not only high spots, but also twist. And now we're at a point to where it's a nice flat work surface, but I still have tool marks from the, uh, the low angle jack plane. So what I'm going to do to remove all of the tool marks is use my smoothing plane. This is a four and a half smoother. And this is the only instance where I am running with the grain, but I'm doing so in a, uh, an appropriate pattern to where I take similar amounts from all over the workbench and stopping once the workbench is nice and smooth. I'm not really removing much material at all. The plane is set to take very fine smoothing shavings. Flattening a large slab of wood, or in this case, a laminated workbench top, uh, may seem a little bit daunting, but using hand tools and once you get the basics down, it's really not that bad. It's just sticking with the fundamentals and a little bit of manual labor. Um, this turned out really well. And like I said, a couple things to note really quick. I am at a friend of mine's house. Uh, this is his shop, his workbench. He built it off my plan. So if you're interested in building a similar workbench to this, uh, with or without a cabinet down below, I do have a set of detailed plans available and I'll post the link to those in the description below. And then also while I'm here, we just shot a shop tour video and he's got a pretty well equipped shop um, that has some similarities and differences to my shop. And I wanted to share it with all of you guys. So we did shoot a shop tour video. I'll post the link to it. Be sure to check that out. Uh, that's all I got for you guys this week. Thanks for watching. You guys take care and have a great day.